I'm the Blue Kai on Wings and today let's have a look at my dart fly. I originally designed these well, a couple of months ago now because I just felt the urge I wanted to do some designing and something and well the trendy thing to do is design an entire blaster that's a bit complicated when you've got no experience. I did all these in open scad. Now I wanted something simple to design and for some reason the idea of like a switch blade but for nerf came to me. So all these are variations on a theme but basically the same thing. Oops. So here's your super tactical operator one because it's a, a short dart so therefore it's a, the high power version. But these all have the same idea. You've got a little base here, which in this instance is grey because that's part of my colours. You can see it's got a, a barbed fitting. In this instance, this is the elite size base. I suppose you could call it the normal dart size. So that works with the short dart version. And this one has the same base, because again, it's just the elite size. Oh, I put a small gap hole down the middle of it. You probably can't see it. But that enforces some walls down the middle, so it should make it extra strong. And again, you just fit the dart by putting it over there. And the second part after the base are these walls. Now, there we go. And we've got a oh, difference there, but I'll come to that later. <laughs> then we've got this one, which is the Boomco variant, which looks a little bit different because with foam you can use a barb fitting, but with this, not so. You can't really keep stretching it out. So you've got a little head that will fit on the inside but not massively too much to stretch it out and a slightly flared base to go around the in flared base of your boom code art. Now obviously this is designed to fit the perfect circle inside of that but this is slightly smaller so to fit you kind of just put it on the edge and then just rotate it over a little bit of stretch and that's kind of held quite snugly and push it down to feel a bit of resistance because you want to get it basically sat straight and then you just pop it over, you see? And basically that slightly inflared bottom holds it in so it won't fall off. And the combination of how far it comes out and this bigger head hold it steady so it won't move. And here's your shield buster. <laughs> now this is better, you can see the, uh, the hole down the middle to make it strong. But same idea as the Elite just scaled up. Your base with a bar fitting and two big sides. Okay, I've just set them up this way in the side view because I'm going to go to the difference between like the Mark 1 and I suppose the Mark 1A. The original thought process was I wanted it to be as simple as possible, minimum pieces, minimum effort to put it together. So I printed a base here and there's a slight slope on the side of the pivot which is kind of built in. And these are identical. I mean, well, mine's custom, which says axe on one side and dart flare on the other. But you just printed two of the same side. And you would put it down on the table. You'd put the base in on one side and you kind of clip into the other, which sounded good and pretty much did work with like the initials I tested with and kind of mostly this blue one. See, I think the original test filament in black was a bit more flexible, so it did just pop over. But you can see you've got a bit of a crack there on the layer line. And you can see over here, I've lost a piece entirely, and on the Mega one, I've actually kind of lost it even more, so I ended up gluing it back in, having to work it while it was setting to stop it gluing itself to itself. So then I moved on to the, call it the 1A. And what I did, if you can kind of see here, that's probably the best way to do it, was I split the side into two bits. Now, Technically I've added complexity because I need two more bits and some glue, but it's a better option. So if you've got some flexible enough PLA, you can just have the clip together version, no fuss. If however your PLA, or whatever you're printing is not that flexible, or you just don't fancy the stress of trying to break it. I separated off one of the ends and you glue it in place. Obviously you glue it in place after you put it in place. So I've just actually printed off another one here, which I'm going to assemble. Somebody gave me these for free, which is quite useful, but I'd recommend clamps of some form. 
Here's a glue ready. Basically, you put it in. So, yeah, for example, the, the initial, initial idea was you put it on, and you can see how much that's coming out. And if, you, <laughs> if you're brave, you can do it, but if you're not, we'll glue it on. Now, when you're doing this, you need enough glue that it won't move, but you need not too much glue so you don't splodge everywhere and glue it shut. So we just, is this set solid? I'll just put the blob on there. Gonna put the rough side down because hopefully that'll allow a bit more purchase. And we put it in place. We try not to glue our fingers on, even though we can feel it sticking. And we hold that for a couple of seconds to let the glue set. We need to make sure it stays mobile. Okay, I'm going to put that one on that way. Okay, and again another careful blob. Slot it, oops, into position. <laughs> Hoping we got that right. Does seem to move. Oh, there's a bit of, bit of a glue spodge there. I like to keep a tissue around. Just this. Absorbs the super glue. Well, at the very least, it can be ripped off easy. Right, I don't think there's any coming out the sides there. So. Put those on. It still seems to move. And that's how you assemble the Mark 1A. You just now wait for it to dry. And when it's done, fit a dart. And there you go. You can go get some melee tags now. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.